Hi everyone. Uh, when I started my lecture of Zechariah chapter 10, I said uh, this chapter, uh, chapter 10, contains the greatest amount of gospel in the Bible. Uh, the gospel is not only found in New Testament. There are also uh, many gospels in the Old Testament. Uh, the Hebrew word for uh, preach the gospel uh, or to bring good news, to bring good tidings uh, is in Hebrew uh, basar. Uh, the basar, uh, the verb basar appears 21 times in an Old Testament. Uh, the Septuagint, uh, Septuagint is a, the translation of the Old Testament into ancient Greek. Uh, Septuagint translates uh, this verb basar uh, as euangelizo, or euangelizo uh, meaning gospel. Uh, that is the gospel. Uh, gospel uh, began with Old Testament. Uh, the noun form uh, of uh, uh, Greek word uh, 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 this uh, uh, euangelizo, euangelizo uh, is the gospel, uh, which is the core of the New Testament. Uh, the verb form, uh, the noun form is euangelion, euangelion. Euangelion comes from euangelizo. Euangelizo is uh, translated from the Hebrew word basar. Uh, first, uh, let's read a few words from the book of uh, Isaiah together, uh, which contains the word, Hebrew word, basar, uh, euangelizo. Uh, let's read, uh, you who bring good tidings to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout, lift it up, uh, do not be afraid, say the towns of Judah, here is your God, Isaiah chapter 40. I was the first to tell Zion, look here they are. I gave to Jerusalem a messenger of good tidings. Isaiah chapter 41. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who, those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, uh, your God, reigns in Isaiah chapter 52. Um, the spirit of sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness uh, for the prisoners. Isaiah chapter 61. Uh, these are very beautiful sentences, uh, warm earth, uh, just by reading them. Many of these warm words of the gospel appear after Zechariah chapter 40 in the Old Testament. However, in Zechariah, the number is uh, incomparable to other places, and it occupies an absolute amount compared to the total amount. In particular, all of Zechariah uh, chapter 10 is uh, the word of gospel. And those who watch this lecture series uh, will be able to enter the world of the great gospel of the Old Testament through the book of Zechariah. Uh, do you feel the book of Zechariah is very good gospel? Today, uh, we would like to share the word with you in Zechariah chapter 10, verse 8. Uh, God say, He will gather the scattered people of the northern kingdom with a whistle. Uh, whistle uh, uh, is uh, translated uh, in NIV uh, uh, with signal, at the same meaning. Uh, as we shared earlier, God gives hope not only for the salvation of Judah, the southern, but also the salvation of the northern kingdom. Uh, Joseph, Ephraim is northern kingdom. 
Uh, northern kingdom of Israel was destroyed 130 years before uh, the southern kingdom of Judah, before the fall of southern kingdom. So it has completely scattered and uh, lost its identity. But God promises to call out not only Judah, but also Ephraim, the scattered northern kingdom, with a whistle. Whistle. <whistles> whistle. Regarding the word whistle, um, uh, Scala Mitchell explains uh, in ancient times it was a very sharp and clear signal of a shepherd uh, to call his sheep. Uh, hence, the word whistle is a, a pastoral language. The situation of pastor. Uh, pastoral situation is very important in, in the Bible. We are sheep. God is shepherd. Jesus is, is a true good shepherd. Pastoral situation is uh, very important uh, in our faith. Uh, whistle is a sharp sound. A shepherd makes them, makes when he calls a sheep. It's called uh, in the Hebrew word, a uh, sharak, sharak, a uh, whistle, uh, sharak, verb, uh, and the word itself makes you feel that uh, it's an uh, uh, onomatopoeic uh, language, onomatopoeic language, uh, sound, uh, expressing sound. Uh, uh, you, we, we easily uh, feel uh, uh, onomatopoeic sound, whick, uh, sharak, sharak, yeah. Um, a shepherd takes his sheep out all day and whistles as he gathers the sheep in the evening. And God also blows the whistle in today's test. God is uh, portrayed as a man, just like a man. God is ju portrayed just like a shepherd. Uh, this has been explained, uh, uh, already uh, mentioned, uh, as anthropomorphism. God is portrayed just like human. Uh, the southern kingdom of Judah and the northern kingdom of Israel were both destroyed by the conquest of the great powers. They were destroyed, they were scattered, taken into captivity. Their hearts were also torn to shreds by the wounds. Faith and trust have all been destroyed. It's a picture of sheep lost in captivity. To those scattered nations, to their scattered hearts, to those who wander like broken earthware, God whistles, God says, He will gather them. The word whistle, uh, the word signal, already presupposes uh, forgiveness. The forgiveness is hiding uh, uh, be, uh, behind this word. Our forgiveness uh, is uh, also our main issue of our uh, Christian life. Uh, uh, to understand uh, God's forgiveness, uh, let me give you two memories of uh, my childhood time. Uh, first, uh, after making a mistake, uh, mother uh, calls out to the child. Uh, the child hides behind the mountain, behind some, some place, and does not come down. And mother says, uh, hey, everyone, eat. Dinner is ready. <laughs> uh, do you all know the meaning of this word? Uh, there are many meanings in this single word, right? Another thing, uh, do you remember when you were uh, young, uh, boys and girls, uh, when you were gathering your friends to start a game? You would say, someone who will play stick here. Uh, in Korean, yogi yogi putora, come here, stick here. 
and walk around the neighborhood. Uh, this is exactly what it looks like. Our God whistles, our God signals to those of us who have fallen in despair, who have turned our backs on God, who are wandering. God telling us to gather, telling us to start over, telling us come back. This is the meaning of whistling. Uh, in the story of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, the father always looks, out, looks outside, thinking of his son who has gone away, waiting for the prodigal son to return. It is truly beautiful by, uh, by listening the, the, the story. And the decision of the prodigal son to return to his father with a difficult decision is also truly great. However, uh, in Zechariah 10, 8, God himself calls with whistle. The essence of the text is that the initiative is with God. God has the initiative. The lowly cannot whistle at the high. You know? Uh, the prince can say uh, to the beggar outside the gates, uh, shall we be friends? But the beggar cannot say to the prince, I like you, or let me be friends. Don't. <laughs> Can't. A whistle is what the shepherd blows toward the sheep, not the shepherd. Likewise, a whistle is something that God can blow if you hear the whistle, uh, if we uh, hear the signal, uh, it will be the good news of the gospel for all of us. And uh, uh, listening the message of God, hearing the message of God is also a important spiritual ability. The word gather, gathering, in Zechariah 10:8, um, the word uh, redeemed, uh, the same phrase, the word will multiply. Gather, redeemed, will multiply. In Zechariah 10:8, uh, these words are all meaningful terms, uh, very important terms. Uh, let's think about how meaningful these words are uh, one by one. Uh, the word gather, gather in Hebrew, kabachu, uh, kabachu, gather. Uh, this word appears twice in Zechariah uh, 10, 8, Zechariah 10, 10. Uh, and throughout the Old Testament, this word occurs 121 times. Uh, many of these words are, are used in, uh, when many of these phrases uh, are used in exile or post-exilic text, uh, such as Isaiah, Jeremiah, and then Ezekiel. Uh, it can also be felt through this word that uh, Zechariah uh, is also the class of a classical prophet. Classical prophet is traditional prophet and main uh, mainstream of prophet. Uh, in particular, uh, this word appears 18 times in, in Isaiah alone, and among them it is repeated 13 times in the background of the exile after Isaiah chapter 40, and the uh, words that follow uh, after the exile. Uh, check uh, the phrases. Uh, in other words, God's act of bringing together Israel who are scattered in body and mind through ha hardship and difficulties is beautifully merited in these words. I think uh, it's not just, uh, not just only uh, gathering people, but also uh, how many things do I have together within myself? So many things together in myself. Uh, my mind, my body, my life, my way of thinking, 
and my purpose of my life. When these things are gathered in faith, with faith, I and myself and my community will be restored and able to take on, take on a new work. Things that are not gathered cannot generate power. Uh, for example, in, in tug of war, uh, tug of war, uh, pulling the rope, uh, tug of war, uh, total number is not, number is not important. Uh, it, the most important is uh, gathering uh, power uh, as one, gathering power as one uh, is most important. Gathering power. Uh, God is whispering today uh, saying that he will unite, unite the scattered things, unite the scattered power for one purpose, for one reason. Uh, Zechariah 10.8, uh, God says uh, another, uh, uh, another uh, uh, word, I have redeemed them. Uh, the word redeem, also important, uh, in Hebrew, fada, fada. Uh, redeem is a very important word and refers to asking for something at the price, just like uh, Jesus Christ in the cross, in the sacrifice. Uh, as a typical example, all the firstborn sons of Egypt uh, in Exodus story, uh, Egypt firstborn sons died during the uh, uh, Passover, uh, during the Exodus. But Israel uh, put the blood of the Passover lamb uh, on the doorposts so that the uh, sword of God deviated from the house of Israel. You know the story of Exodus, the uh, story of Passover. Just like uh, today's text, uh, Zechariah 10, 8, the meaning of God's redemption of Israel shows that God's will to save Israel even if he sees Israel as precious. In other words, it is God's will for redemption that the northern kingdom of Israel can be gathered and prospered again, and it also means that God will accomplish this work himself. God want to accomplish this work himself. Uh, in the last part of Zechariah 10.8, uh, 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 another uh, uh, word, uh, God says that the scattered northern kingdom of Israel, uh, Israel will, me, will prosper, prosper as they did before. Uh, the meaning of the word uh, prosper, multiply, uh, in Hebrew is uh, Rabba, Rabba. Rabba is found in God's word. Rabba uh, means multiply. Uh, be fruitful, be multiply. Just like in Genesis chapter 1, verses 22, 28. God created all kinds of plants, fish, and birds. Gave them the blessing uh, to be fruitful and prosperous and gave them the word of blessing to be fruitful and multiply. In the same way, after creating all the animals and humans. Uh, this word, fruitful and multiply, is a Genesis term. Uh, in other words, it is used uh, when uh, starting a new, uh, starting a new uh, Genesis term, need fruitful, and multiply. Uh, it's a word that contains the beginning. Uh, 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 the heart of the beginning. Uh, in the uh, Chinese, 初心, 初心, the heart of the beginning. Northern Kingdom of Israel was formerly prosperous. Uh, it was much stronger and more powerful than the Southern Kingdom uh, God tells that uh, you will restore the strength you had before. 
and we will we also will restore the strength we had before. Um, we share the precious meaning of uh, one verse uh, uh, in Zechariah 10:8. Uh, God blows the whistle. Just thinking about it makes God happy and grateful. For this is God's divine initiative. This is God's divine initiative. All of the history of the Bible is the work of God's divine initiative. I think of God's whistle, God's signal, as uh, also a signal of salvation. I think of it as a whistle signaling the beginning of a new age. I think it's an, it's an expression of God's will to restore. With a whistle, God will summon us, redeem us, and prosper us in the new world that God is planning and a new age God is going to build so that we can fulfill our precious mission. It's very graceful. It's very uh, uh, heartwarming, full of joy, full of impression. And one more thing to think about, uh, the whistle is the sound of God's calling. I wonder what, what kind of project God has planned. What kind of project God has planned? Uh, when we have some uh, proposal or project uh, from somebody, uh, we usually ask, uh, what is uh, it like? When somebody is offering a project, we think, uh, how does it benefit me? Uh, men usually decide whether to accept or decline uh, by considering the following factors. However, we should all respond immediately to God's calling and say yes. When Jesus called his disciples, Jesus did not explain. Jesus uh, did not uh, present uh, Jesus' plan to his dis disciples at length. He just called. Jesus just called the disciples. And they gave up everything Follow the Lord. Whistle of the Lord requires immediate response. Uh, because God, who is the owner of the universe, has chosen me for his great work. We have to get up and participate immediately. Uh, today, I want to hear the whistle of God. Uh, let's hope that we can rise again. Uh, participate again. We be rewritten through the sound informs us a new recovery and a beginning when we are dispersed. Uh, let's gather our scattered or figures, uh, gather uh, uh, our communities, gather ministries, ministers, uh, and use that gathered strength to accomplish God's work. I pray in the name of the Lord, we can say we can all move forward uh, toward a new history as we listen to the voice of God who created life in the beginning, told us to be fruitful and multiply together today. Yeah, let me tell you the prayer topics to share today. Number one, Thank the Lord for the whistling. Oh God, uh, give me courage to hear that voice. Make me stand up again. Answer me and move on. I want to participate in the new work the Lord is planning. Two, I hope that all the scattered beings can come together as one. Gather together uh, so that uh, they may be written in the history of God. Number three, Give us strength in the language of new beginnings. Uh, may the new era of new creation be well established. And that it may prosper and exist in a precious way. 
for the glory of the Lord. Today's story ends here. Uh, thank you. Shalom.